okay guys, it is a new month, it is a new box. That must mean it is time for... Well, she's a heavy one this month, so I am excited to just crack her open and share these goodies with you. Here we go. Okay, I always do it backwards, but wow. Okay, we have my Mortal Fear oil colors. I knew it would happen one day. And also gray worms to represent my dread. And I have still all those oil colors that I bought that I haven't tried yet. But these are M. Graham, which I'm super excited about. We've got a Payne's Gray and a Titanium White in M. Graham oil colors. So I know my friend Marsha Furman is going to be so excited by this. I think she got the box this month as well. Ooh, lovely brush. Gotta have cool big paintbrushes that are for oils. Uh, you should always use paintbrushes that are specific for oil painting. If you didn't know that, don't use like your watercolor brushes on it. We've got walnut oil. I've also been curious to see what this is like. Eh, let's put that down so I'm not choking. <laughs> and let's keep digging in. Ooh, we've got more stuff we've got an ivory black very dark and light palette i guess like we can have a grayscale palette here right and ooh, a palette knife i actually did buy some of these but i haven't used them yet um we have the menu but it has spoilers so we throw it aside i bet it's art alternatives yeah an art alternatives canvas and it's i don't know what size but then a larger one and then a super big one i think this is a cool box well they're always cool in my opinion from powerful packs and so this one is a three quarter inch profile one and i'm assuming that would be it because oils are expensive i think that is so so let's organize these goodies and get stuck in on an art adventure okay guys i'm going to start small with the tiny canvas or the smallest canvas that we've received and i've also placed out the paints and walnut oil you can use this to slow drying for oil paints and also to clean brushes and it's not going to be toxic or anything so it's it's a good way it's an environmentally friendly way to clean brushes i think the old masters used to do it this canvas has something weird on it let's see if i can get it off maybe a bit of glue or something and i've also got um a piece of palette paper that i bought to use with the oils that i bought over a year ago it's the gray matters paper palette and i just tore off a little bit and so I think it's hilarious that I've had oil paints for well over a year now and I still haven't used them at all, never used them before. <laughs> and as soon as I get a powerful packs box, I dive straight into it. And this is one of the reasons why I actually love art subscription boxes, even if they may be slightly overpriced because yeah, I got it off. That was weird. Um, because you, well, for me, I force myself to use the materials as soon as possible. No excuses. So other times I might buy art supplies and go, oh, I'll get to that soon. But in the case of these, I'm going to use them right now. Let's see what we can do. I'm freaking out. <laughs> so I think I'll put out some colors and see how I go with mixing them. There might be a bit of glare from my light, sorry. I have no idea how much I need. I'm gonna go with that. I'm actually, okay, let's be a bit more generous with white and then I can make more gray scales, I think. All right, we've got Payne's Gray, a lovely bluish gray, if you've never used Payne's Gray before. And I can actually see the oil there or some of the oil there and probably got way too much of it because i wasn't really thinking but that's okay i'm just interested to explore and get a background down for now and i also realize i should put some whoops i should put some paper down some newspaper down i really have no idea what i'm doing it has a really interesting texture to it I've seen people paint with oil paints on like YouTube and stuff out of curiosity and to kind of psych myself up to do some oil painting. So I guess I have some idea, but I really, I swear I've never used oil paints ever before. So this will be interesting. And I think I want a palette to put some walnut oil in. 
just so I can use everything. Oh, okay, there's lots. I really don't have an idea how to pour that. Okay, here we go. Wish me luck. <laughs> I need to change screens over to an image that I found on Pixabay that I want to... Yeah, I do want to kind of sketch in. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> and I'm quite nervous. All right, I want to try to sketch in a shape on the front page when I went to Pixabay there's this cool photograph because it's a free photograph sharing site if you don't know it like um, uh, Unsplash and Paint My Photo and a range of others where you can use the images copyright free and yay thanks for all those photographers that take photos of this stuff um, anyway there is this cool image of a guy in a creepy forest it's all in black and white i guess there's lots of halloweeny type things on and he is wearing a severe jacket with his arms down and he has this big kind of bird-like skull instead of a head so it's placed on his head obviously or she i don't know and <laughs> out of the skull which is interesting to me there are lots of feathers and so I'm gonna try to sketch those in I'm not sure I left enough room so let's try to change this a bit in fact that should be down there anyway it's a very I'll, I'll put up the reference photo there's it's a really interesting skull i wonder if it's made out of paper mache or something i'm sure it can't be a real animal as far as i know anyway otherwise it's a very strange bird shape so that should be down there more i keep trying to draw everything way up higher and i probably should have put in a grid or something to sketch from and then we've got big Oh, we've also got a kind of air hold, air hold, <laughs> and like a nostril shape there, and then an eye hole, a very large eye hole here. My hope is even if this turns out to be a kind of disaster for not um, being in proportion and being too clear because it's creepy, it's still going to work, and if not, I'll chalk it down to a test run. I'm not sure about the size of this brush either, but I realized I want to get in a background. So I have to kind of just paint in stuff now and I'll do the feathers after that. That's my plan. I'm sticking with it. That's my idea. And I'll try to work from right to left. I think I need far more paint than I put down. I wonder if I should have gessoed this. I have a feeling I probably should have put gesso down first. So whoopsie. Oh well. So what are you guys doing for Halloween? Let me know in the comments below if you're doing anything exciting or not. I've seen a couple of people in costumes, but in DC, we're about to have a big thunderstorm and it looks like Halloween's kind of going to be a bit ruined this year. Probably most of you aren't excited at all about it. I don't know. But um, as a foreigner who grew up without Halloween, I find it really kind of interesting and it would be like secretly one of my favorite holidays that I never ever got to experience except through you know popular culture and movies and tv and all that sort of stuff but you know I've had my fair share of dress up parties and other cool things so I can't complain okay so this is gonna be a bit slow I'm gonna time lapse the the painting of the background I think but before I do that I will note that what everyone says about you know oils being easy to blend and really smooth seems very very true it's kind of like um, acrylic paints in a super creamy mode to me and 
So far, not as scary as I thought they would be. Anyway, time for time lapse mode, and I'll come back once the background has a layer. Bye. <laughs> I've decided just to do a regular voiceover for the end of it and to keep it all in speed time lapse. I think you've probably gotten enough of an idea of how long I'm taking as a beginner to lay down my background and to maybe mix the colors and to work a little bit. I did find it a bit frustrating only to have this one brush. I sometimes wanted a larger brush for the background parts, for example, and then a smaller brush for the fine details. But I do think for this size canvas that the brush overall if you could only have one was probably the best size to have. I do think though that you really need a larger brush if you're going to be working on those larger canvases and I totally get though that powerful packs only included one brush though because all the oil paint supplies are quite expensive and I think the total retail of this box is something like $60 or over. Just the paints alone were basically the cost of the box, just the three paints. And that's because M. Graham paints are super high quality. If you've never tried them before, I've really been blown away by their watercolors and the oil colors are also the same vein. All M. Graham products are just amazing. These and these are only the second ones that I've tried, so take that with a grain of salt. But I do think that the quality of these, even though I've never tried oil paints before, do really seem high quality to me. You can feel the oiliness of them, but it's so creamy at the same time. And of course, as you can see there, they just blend together just so easily like a dream and they were just a joy to work with. So I really appreciate Powerful Packs putting in these M. Graham paints and or these M. Graham oil color paints. And I also think that the Warner oil was a really clever addition. It was really great for kind of thinning down the paint for the background and to get that down a little bit quicker, although I probably should have gessoed the background. And I just really like the luminosity that you get the, or the extra sheen that you get with the old Warner oil. Although, as it said, it takes way longer to dry when you've got the Warner oil. It's the next day and still there's no sign of even close to drying for this piece. And so I totally understand now why oil painters would be working on many different paintings at once. So you could have an underpainting going on one canvas, then working on the background for a new canvas, and then maybe doing fine details for another canvas and so on. So. You can see the final product here and the supplies. This was just such a fun box and finally got me to challenge my fear of oil color paint. So I'm so grateful for that. And thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, like, and change the notification bell for the new all notifications. And leave me a comment down below and I'll see you guys soon for another art adventure. Remember, create a little more and consume a little less. Take care everyone. Bye.